Ezekiel Sims. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. You know, for some, there are ways to spot trouble on the horizon. Sailors have red skies in the morning. People below the IQ of 75 have coffee lids that warn them that the hot coffee they ordered is indeed hot. And Sony bringing back the writing team of Morbius to write Madam Web is a warning for audiences. Billions of people in the English-speaking world, people with actual talent in writing, exist. And Sony hired these dicks instead. Having Morbius and Madam Web back-to-back -back in your credits should instantly blind people. Do you know what inspires confidence in a movie? When your lead actress, Dakota Johnson, is quoted in saying, I've never really done a movie where you're on a blue screen and there's these fake explosions going off and someone's going, explosion, and you act like there's an explosion. That to me was absolutely psychotic. I was like, I don't even know if this is going to be good at all. Well, I'm sold. I hope the theater isn't empty. Madam Web might seem like it's embarrassed to be on the big screen, but don't let that fool you. In reality, it's like watching the movie theater have a miscarriage for two hours. A miscarriage that is sometimes hilarious on the levels of the room, but even fails to be so bad it's full circle good. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! The prologue begins in 1973 in the jungles of Peru. Mama Web, yes her last name is actually Webb, is nine months pregnant with our hero, and she's studying spiders. In fact, she's looking for a particular rare spider whose venom can cure diseases. Which diseases? I don't know, pick one of the bad ones. AIDS. Ebola. Cancer. Anal fissures. Well, wouldn't you know it, she finds the spider and, for her troubles, is shot by her assistant, Ezekiel. He steals her research and her precious little damn spider, leaving Mama Webb for dead. You'll never guess why he shoots her for the spider. No, seriously, you'll never guess because it's never explained. This is one of those choose-your-own-character motivation type of movies. That is stupid, yay. So Mama Web is dying in the middle of the rainforest until a race of spider people scoops her up at the last moment. Turns out Peter Parker is a culturally appropriating racist who is no better than the jerks who wear a Native American headdress at Coachella. These natives have spider powers minus the webs and wear tribal Spider-Man-esque costumes with webbing made out of tree bark and leaves or whatever that inspires Spider-Man and Ezekiel's costume. Anyways, these extremely nice and very peaceful natives help give birth to Mama Webb's daughter, Cassie, in a cave. The moment that happens, Mama Webb does the selfish thing and dies. Also, they can't raise a white girl in their tribe, so they give her up for adoption with the hopes that one day she'll return. I am not making this up. Fast forward and the year is 2003, which is not important to the story at all. The filmmakers thought you should know, and I'm just passing that information along. Cassie is played by the infinitely talented Dakota Johnson. Talented only if you took away charisma, wit, screen presence, and actual talent. Her face is about as monotone as the lines she reads. No matter what emotion she's attempted, she has one dumb look for it. It's the same dumb look she has off screen as well. You're very familiar with it. Every line that is spoken falls out of her lips as if each word weighed a ton. Hi, sir. All right, I'm going to cut your seatbelt. Get, get up. Get off. Get off. Go. Get off. You're going to die if you stay here. Did I die? Cassie is an ambulance driver who is sponsored by Pepsi. The product placement of Pepsi in this film is about as subtle as a flying school bus. Cassie has a near-death experience brought to you by Pepsi, where she is trapped in a car that falls off the side of a bridge and raid right into Pepsi Lake. Ultimately, she's saved by her partner, Ben Parker, played by Adam Scott. That's right, the Uncle Ben. With great power comes great responsibility. I, I was going to stick with bitches. His sister-in-law? is pregnant with Peter Parker, a fact that is obvious to the viewers right away, but for some reason, director S.J. Clarkson and writer Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless want to play it coy, like it's some revelation to come. A revelation that 
never arrives. But with the last name of Sharpless, are you expecting any of this to make sense? The fact that the sister-in-law is pregnant, though, will come up later, so keep that in mind. Anyways, this near-fatal accident for Cassie awakens her supernatural ability of clairvoyance. It also awakens the audience into having a migraine for a majority of the movie. Each time Cassie's jarring power to see into the future presents itself, you have an epileptic moment, or your nose bleeds out for no reason, or your brain pumps out of your ears like popcorn butter. You're half the person you used to be before seeing this movie your recovery will be long and painful kill me <laughs> kill me now i'm begging you and this is where the plot becomes so convoluted and contrived while simultaneously maintaining its status as retarded that it will take a spike to your frontal lobe to understand it. Cassie begins to see the future. The audience understands what is happening right away. It takes Cassie another hour of the movie and several migraine inducing visions later to figure this out. Well, we're waiting. When Cassie hops on the subway, she has a dream that Ezekiel is going to kill three innocent girls on the train because he too had a dream that one day these girls will become spider babes and will try to kill him. And one of the spider babes turns out to be a dreamer whose dad is illegally in the country. See, there are dreamy layers to this shit parfait. And it should be noted that one of the spider babes is Sidney Sweeney whose uh, talents were severely neglected in this entire movie. In fact, the three girls are so underutilized, it's pathetic. Not once do you see them become superheroes or fight or even wear their suits beyond Ezekiel's masochistic wet dream. Ezekiel spends most of his time monologuing about the potential destruction of his vague empire to his assistant, played by Zosha Mamet. Zosha is the daughter of American writing legend David Mamet. Clearly, he was nowhere near when she read this script, if she read this script. I'm not even convinced there was even a script. Zosha plays her part like director S.J. Clarkson is holding her at gunpoint off screen. Her character of girl who sits at desk is tasked with locating the spider babes. She hacked the NSA database in order to do so. She does this with tech from 2024 that she bought at Circuit City in 2003. Why is she helping Ezekiel? Because he's paying her a lot of money. The girl who sits at desk manages to track the girls multiple times. First in the subway where Cassie finally begins to accept her powers. Cassie manages to stay one step ahead of him, which proves not to be too hard of a task because Ezekiel is busy killing every single subway policeman he can find, clearing a path for Cassie and the girls. Now Ezekiel has to redouble his efforts. And by that I mean he tells the girl who sits at desk to type faster. Cassie steals a taxi cab and drives it to the woods, where she does the heroic thing by abandoning the three girls so she can go search for answers alone. Maybe get a bite to eat, take a shower, talk to her cat, attempt to climb a wall. I am not making this up. You know, there's a killer out there looking for these girls, Cassie. Aren't paramedics like in the business of saving people, especially paramedics that could see into the future? I kind of feel like a secluded forest is the perfect spot for a killer to find his prey. She leaves them with no food or water. Tough titties, kids. All right, to give Cassie some credit, she did at the last minute assume the leadership position and bark the order of, and I quote, don't do anything dumb. Don't do dumb things. Before ditching them. I am not making this up. Well, they do a dumb thing like, get hungry, and wanders to a nearby diner. Cassie goes home and finds answers in a box filled with her mom's journal and photos. She knows this is tied to her mother somehow, but how was she tipped off? Not because of her new superpower, but because one of the girls said Ezekiel crawled the walls like a spider. I am not making this up. Oh, come on! She finds a picture of her mom with Ezekiel in the forest in 1973. What does this all mean? Now that I think about it, maybe Dakota Johnson was the perfect casting choice to play an idiot. Did I die? After this landmark discovery that Ezekiel knows her mother, she comes back for the spider babes. They're being attacked in the diner by Ezekiel. Cassie saves the spider babes just in time by running Ezekiel over with the taxi cab. This doesn't kill him. They escape again and find a nearby motel. The most that happens here is Cassie gives the three girls a CPR lesson for what feels like an eternity. I guess this is the powers they gain. The spider babes are going to CPR Ezekiel to death. Once this meme-worthy scene, shot in a very compromising way, is over, she informs them that she has to leave for Peru to, uh, get some more answers. 
Yeah, that's it. Cassie dumps the girls off onto Uncle Ben. When Cassie flies back to Peru, she meets the spider Tarzans that saved her life. She gets the true answer to her burning question. Her mom really did love her. Wait, what? What the hell are you talking about? This is an issue never brought up at all. Not once did she question her mother's love. She even talked highly of the foster care system. She never brings animosity towards being adopted or the fact that she grew up without her real mother. The only explanation for this is, writers Sazama and Sharpless clearly hit the chromosome jackpot when they were born. My whole life, people have been telling me I'm special. Turns out her mom was in the rainforest trying to find the spider to cure the disease Cassie was diagnosed with before she was born. A disease that is news to everyone in and outside of this cave. Are you requesting that lobotomy yet? Bludgeon my face in. Kill me. Pull me apart like soft bread. Destroy me. Twist my head clean off and put me to sleep with your kind boots, Mr. Fancy Man. But now that Cassie knows this, she feels complete. We don't, as the audience, we're even more confused now than we ever have been. That's all before the altruistic and completely peaceful native spider people spin Uncle Ben's wise and timeless adage, with great power comes great responsibility, to when you take on responsibility, great power will come. Thanks, Yoda. This doesn't make any sense. You can feel the writers saying, we gotta have the line in there, but better. And then spent days trying to figure out the perfect way to fuck it up. While the girls are with Uncle Ben at his sister-in-law's, her spidey water breaks. They hop into the car and go to the hospital. Ezekiel tracks them down and chases them. Before he can kill everyone, including Spider-Man in the car, Cassie runs him over. Again. This time with a flying ambulance. I'm not making this up. This does not kill Ezekiel. Instead, he chases them to a rooftop of a fireworks factory where Cassie's superpower of telling everyone to get down kicks into overdrive. But the one person who doesn't heed to Cassie's warning to get down is Ezekiel, where he's crushed by a giant Pepsi sign. I am not making this up. Madam Webb had potential of a decent premise that would have served the story with some tension. Instead of whatever this bullshit is of a movie, they could have kept it simple. Something along the lines of, Cat Lady Cassie is thrusted into the motherhood role of three teens, a role she never wanted. She has to figure out how to keep them together while frantically trying to anticipate Ezekiel's next move, while also attempting to harness her newfound powers. Instead, we have to hear about their hangups and why their parents aren't home and their background while the hero of the movie is constantly ditching them, as the villain has proven he can track them down in even the most remote areas. Both Cassie and Ezekiel are exposition dumps with lips. Every time their gums flap, they're monologuing. Ezekiel is by far the dumbest, most flat villain written in modern cinema. And it doesn't help that when he's taking his expositional shit on screen, his lips don't match with what he's saying. It looks like an old school kung fu movie when he talks. I am not making this up. Are you Brigadier Charles Shen Wu Ford? Quite right. Now I think it's time you die. <laughs> His empire is unknown. His motivation can only be summed up as, I don't want those spider babes to kill me and destroy everything I built, so I must kill them first. In fact, that easily could be in his repertoire of dialogue. At one point, Girl at Desk pulls up Cassie Webb's profile, to which he says, Did you say Cassandra Webb? Yeah, why? Do you know her? It's not possible. What's not possible? That you might know her or she's the daughter of the woman you killed. Dude, you crawl on ceilings and have superhuman strength. But the fact that the daughter of the woman you killed survived, that's just too far to imagine. The plot of this supposed chase movie moves much like a building would. And the dialogue is read between two characters as if it was Amazon Echo interacting with Google Home. Hey Google, please translate. It's already late into German. Es ist schon spät. Wow, cool. By the way, today is my birthday. Hey homie, could you sing happy birthday for me? You can't totally blame Dakota Johnson's lack of screen presence or her missing acting ability or her mediocre looks or the fact that she is the ultimate example of nepotism. The daughter of Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith, a nepo baby in her own right, being the daughter of Tippi Hedren. I would compare Johnson's acting to a plank of wood, but a plank of wood can be entertaining in the right hands. Also, wood can be useful in building fences. Fences that keep Dakota Johnson away from acting. Her performance in Madam Web makes fellow Nepo baby Sofia Coppola's acting in Godfather 3 look Oscar-worthy. But Johnson's lack of anything resembling charisma on or off the screen 
can only be blamed for so much. Some of the blame does go to Sharpless and Suzama, but hell, they only penned the damn movie. Sony was the one who greenlit this piece of shit. But a lot of the blame goes to director S.J. Clarkson and editor Lee Folsom Boyd, who attempted to take a 30-minute script not even the CW would purchase and stretch it out to two hours. We have to constantly relive scenes as Boyd recycles the same footage. This is most likely due to the fact that S.J. Clarkson didn't have a vision beyond her vaguely remembering what Doug Liman accomplished in Edge of Tomorrow. But Madam Web is more like Edge of Tomorrow if Edge of Tomorrow was made by Satan himself. Every looped scene after Cassie has a vision of the future, or the past, you find yourself begging God to please make it stop. Whatever's going on here, stop it immediately. At the end of the day, the only way Madam Web is related to Spider-Man is that it features spiders. The worst aspect of Madam Web, as bad as it is, is that it's not bad enough to be enjoyable. With all the things not going for this movie, the best S.J. Clarkson could have done was lean into the shit sandwich and hope to dethrone the room or Samurai Cop as the most enjoyable worst movie of all time. They call him Samurai. He speaks fluent Japanese. Are you Fuji Fujiyama? What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. I mean, they could have at least tried to have Cassie say, it's webbing time, and then webbed all over the place. Now that's bad and funny. There is a debate going on if there is such thing called superhero fatigue. A debate in which I say there's only bad story fatigue, mixed with the repetitive nature superhero movies have become. Sony is really out here making me change my mind. They really scraped the bottom of the barrel with Madam Web. A movie that ends with the sequel threatening line, The best thing about the future? It hasn't happened yet. Somebody needs to stop Sony. If you enjoyed this video, you go ahead and smash that like button. While you're done doing that, hit the subscribe button. And then, after that, share this with your friends. Family. Pe people you hate. Maybe you don't like my content and just want to waste somebody's time. Do it. Share it. Thank you. It is much appreciated. I'm out of here. Oh,